everybody, welcome back to the Linux Cast. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Alright, so this is the Linux Cast. We talk about Linux things. And uh, be prepared for a podcast that I'm both equally excited for and unprepared for, seeing as how I was running late. And uh, yeah, it's just been one of those days. So, uh, Tyler, my friend, my Gen 2 loving compiling friend once you've compiled your answer what have you done on the next this week <laughs> oh i'm sorry it was compiling give me just a second <laughs> i was gonna say did it freeze that'd be hilarious that would be hilarious <laughs> that's so good um but really in all honesty i haven't been doing too much with a computer because i mean i'm i'm up here um hanging out with scott enjoying colorado can we, can um, we, can we just hold on there because every time you say that it just bugs the you used to live in tennessee and now you're in colorado and you say up here <laughs> okay i moved sideways okay <laughs> i'm just saying your sense of direction is completely <laughs> off <laughs> okay you continue i just it's, really wanted to point just, that out it's it, it's much easier to say up here than like i, I moved left over here like i, I don't but you know you didn't move to canadia okay <laughs> <laughs> Some, hey dude it feels like it man it is cold as hell out here mm-hmm. well actually i mean it's as cold as if hell froze over but whatever <laughs> we have the, the um, lakes protecting us so we're i'm happy about that yeah i wish, I wish. balmy um, 20 degrees <laughs> but i i really have I, i've really just been messing around with like making my own custom kernel and stuff and in doing that i figured out why my lfs didn't boot um which was because of the init ram fs which ben told me i didn't need which is n- not necessarily his fault he was using a much older computer that didn't require stuff like efi and all that good stuff so um, understandable, but I did need it. So, um, I've, I've compiled my own kernel. That's, uh, I, I don't, I really don't notice any difference, but you know, Hey, I've, I've, just, I've just customized sure. my kernel. Just for fun. Yeah. Huh? So now that yeah. you know what was wrong with LFS, would you go back and try again? I'm allowed to, sh- to like swear on this show, right? Like really swear. We do all the time. <laughs> Good. Um, absolutely. Fuck. No. Hell no. <laughs> I I saw Ben talking, like Ben talked with me uh, more about it. And I've read more through BLFS, which is beyond LFS, um, which is essentially beyond the base install. And it is not a system that you would want to run as a daily driver at all. Like, Gen 2, because yes, you do have to compile stuff, people think it's a lot more complicated than it is. Um, Look, Portage might have some quirks that you're unfamiliar with, but it manages to manage your packages very well. Um, I would not want to use LFS at all because I'm a person who likes Steam and that kind of stuff. No, 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 no. (laughs) You don't ever have to worry about me even trying LFS, by the way. <laughs> there, there's no monetary value that I could ever place on that that would ever get me to try it. Yeah. Um, although I, didn't, I think last week I did say that a million dollars a month would I actually try it. Just put it way up there because I'm never, ever going to do that. I mean, you could, like, I watched... LFS is one of those things where, like, it's only for learning. That's it. And also... As someone who's gone through the learning, yes, I did learn a lot, but I don't know that you necessarily, like, I don't need to know exactly how sys, sys v init works because I don't really care about sys v init, but yet I know exactly how the run levels work. I, I, I know everything about sys v init, not everything, but I know way too much than I should. Mm-hmm. All right. So. My turn. So I have some things. So first mm-hmm. of all, I've been playing Zero AD. Thank you, Tyler. I love it. Uh, I, I've limited myself to one game a day. So I, I have some willpower there. Um, I am god-awful. I'm so bad. 
uh, where it turns out is I'm just really, really slow at doing stuff. I feel like I have a lot of time. And like I said, the word I used yesterday when I text when I messaged you, I said lollygagging, and that's exactly what it is. It's like I have plenty of time here. I can create all the things I want. I can, you know, none of this stuff actually matters. But I'm gonna go ahead and build it anyway. <laughs> ways and it's just uh yeah you um spam homes by the way uh <laughs> but yep. uh, i suck at zero deep i'm learning uh because last uh time we played on sunday i got my ass handed to me it was fun um anyway so that's now, if I, you if you can take dt's advice and just attack early it works really well against that ai really well Okay. I'm just going to help you cheat the system. I, I want to learn the best way to do it so I can actually beat an actual human. <laughs> uh, anyways, I, um, so I have a couple things to rant about today. Uh, the first mm -hmm. one is uh, Endeavor OS has some issues with uh, C, C, the compiling programs that are written in C and the C family of languages. So, for example, the Audacity stuff, like... Audacity itself, Tenacity, Audacium, especially those last two that aren't don't actually have binaries that you can download. So if you want to go through and download a binary of Audacity itself, you can do that through the Arch repos. But the problem with that is that it's an old version of Audacity. It's still a two dot whatever, and it doesn't use the new file format for Audacity. All of my projects for the videos I've already recorded, the podcast, and all that stuff use the new file format. So I had to have a new version of Audacity, the three dot whatever, that, that used the new file format. So, And the only way to do that is to compile it from the AUR. Now, I did end up getting straight up Audacity to compile, but Audacity and uh, Audacium and Tenacity, neither one of those would compile. They both had make errors. And as far as I can tell, that's just an Endeavor OS problem. Like, it worked fine on Arco. It worked fine on Manjaro, but it does not work. Neither one of them work on uh, Endeavor. And that, like, the reason why I bring that up, it's not that big of a deal because I did get Audacity to work. But the Audacity that comes straight from Audacity, the new version, like the version, the newest version they've released, is the most atrocious piece of software I've ever seen. Like, they've taken out so much of the good stuff, and they've gone through and redesigned like the the like the actual timeline and the waveform and stuff like that. So that has like a title above it, which is stupid. And the, you remember that tool that you could switch to that would actually just drag the waveform, you know, wherever you hmm. wanted to, they got rid of it. It's gone. Like they took it out. <laughs> like, why did you take it out? That's like, that's an essential piece of thing that you need in order to move things around. And the only way I can figure out how to move stuff now is with the multi-tool and the multi-tool actually goes through and does everything. It changes the, like the, the volume of the, the, the height of the, the waveform. It moves things around. It cuts things like, like, so you have no clue what you're doing. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. So that was kind of like a combined rant between like endeavor caused me to have to go use this piece of trash. And now I have to use this piece of trash and it is, painful to edit things now like it's so bad like i i dread actually going through and editing this podcast later on because i'm gonna have to go through and like move things around because i have to actually go through and like line up both your recording and my recording so that those claps actually are you know they and trying to do that without that tool that actually is meant to drag things around mm -hmm. it's just seriously like what the hell is going on like first of all thank you endeavor for you know not having you know, the ability to compile C programs, which is like the kernel is written in it. You should be able to be able to do this just fine. Mm -hmm. Um, and if it was just one of them, if like, it was just tenacity or something, it would have been fine. Like, cause I would have figured it was tenacity's problem, but it was, it's both of them. Like they're separate projects. They shouldn't be having the same exact problem. It's really weird. Um, so yeah, that was pissing me off. Um, what else did I want to rant about? I'm sure there was something else. We should have a, a whole section every week of just me just ranting about how something pissed me off. Um, that would be great yeah but it's just also the screen flashing thing has got to go so I'm going to fix that next week whether that's through the the, the loopback thing or just hooking up a different webcam because this is that's fucking annoying <sighs> that's why I stopped using the Brio it's just it's not worth it we keep saying we're going to use something other than discord because I blame discord because it doesn't do anywhere else yeah it's nowhere other than discord <laughs> 
But the problem is, is it might not be Discord. It might just be like WebRTC or something like that. Well, WebRTC is not the protocol for the cameras, is it? I don't know. I have no um, idea. <laughs> either way, we keep forgetting that to try something else. Because if we just tried something else and it fixed it there, we just use, you know, even if we had to put up with like Element or something. <laughs> yeah. Gross. <laughs> <laughs> we uh, we could go through and figure out what that dialer's for. <laughs> God, I would so love to find out. <laughs> I just think like, I just want to know. <laughs> All right, so uh, that is it for that section. So contact information. This is the brand new contact information. So you'll have to forgive me if uh, I've uh, if I mess this up. So you can subscribe at the linuxcast.org. There's actually a website there now. Uh, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. You can subscribe to us on YouTube, youtube.com slash linuxcast. All of our other contact information is at the linuxcast.org slash contact. There you'll find uh, links to the email, Twitter, and, of course, Zany's YouTube channel as well. So um, make sure you head on over there if you want to get in contact with us. You can do so. So that is the shortened contact information section. That's it. I like it. Much more manageable. <laughs> it, it can't when it's only four lines long. It's much harder to fuck up. <laughs> Turns yes, out, sir. <coughs> COVID. I hope not, man. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. I, I'm sure that, that's that's just all that smoking you've been doing uh, over there. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. I'm sure. Um, and I'm sure that was very pleasant for everybody else to listen to. So I'm just. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Ty, every week we go through, we scour the internet for news. The biggest, most impactful news that's going on anywhere in the world right now. It's not as if there's like, you know, like a war going on or anything. Uh, yeah, but definitely yeah. this is the most important news you'll hear all week. So Tyler, what is your piece of news this week? Did you know that Ubuntu Mate is only going to have, or not only, what am I talking about? Is going to have flat pack support? out of the box by default, which is awesome. Uh, which I kind of like, I kind of, a, I kind of would like that we just start pushing anything other than snaps. Like just please. I don't I, like snaps. This. Yeah. I, I agree with you there. I love, I'm, I'm beginning to like flat packs more and more. Um, but also, this doesn't apply to the Firefox thing. Like they're going to continue to use the snap of Firefox. Yeah. And Monte, yeah. Which is just like, no, you were, you were so close. Why didn't you just go the whole way? <laughs> like, come on, man. Like you could, there's a flat pack of Firefox. It does the exact same thing. It's just, you know, better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. all the way around. So why didn't you just go the whole, just, just completely rip snaps out and be, make everybody seriously happy. Well, why do you, why would you want to make everything better? It's like, gross. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> like, like, maybe they, maybe they are. You know, maybe they have that in the future, and they just can't do it yet. You know what I mean? Maybe no. that, maybe that's the, maybe that's what's going on. Um, hold on a second. <coughs> we find out the snap is critical to the functioning of the Ubuntu system. Well, what the it Firefox turn, snap. What it turns out is that Canonical found out that I hate snap so much and decided to poison me. That's why I'm dying. Mm-hmm. That's that's what it is. Oh, okay. Uh, the thing is, I haven't coughed all day long, and then all of a sudden we start recording, and all of a sudden I can, half my lung is hanging out. Oh, that, that, picture that. See, you just, I, I told you, you I, t- I told you Anthrax Linux was dangerous, man. Can't be using that. <laughs> all right, so yeah, I'm, Mate seems to, be, is it just me or should Mate just like be the Ubuntu? Like, I like, I like Plasma a lot too. So like they could use Plasma and be happy, but the the development team for Mate should be like in charge of Ubuntu. They 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 go through and they yeah. do all this new and, and stuff. They go through, like for example, I watched uh, Martin Wimpress's uh, Twitch the other day, and he went through and replaced Compton with PyCom. Like Compton has been abandoned now for like three years. Like it hasn't no updates for three years, right? And um, like every. Like every Ubuntu flavor, or whatever, still used Compton in some form or fa- fashion, unless they had their own, you know, uh, compositor. No. And the fact that they went through and actually he went through and integrated into Ma- into Mate Tweak, like it's there. It's 
cool, right? Um, mm -hmm. It just seems like they're always more forward sensible. Yeah, and sensible. Yeah, not so attached yeah. to their pride. Oh, snaps are awesome. We're going to shove them down everybody's throat as far as possible until you gag on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if you know what I mean. <laughs> I get dark really oh, fast. But it's actually kind of accurate. Well, it's just like, come on, man. I I used Ubuntu the other day, the, 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 the latest, to do a video on. And I tried to open up Firefox, and it was like, it took, like... 20 seconds to load like my computer from the year 2000 which was a gateway computer came in 22 boxes i've told the story before would have loaded a browser faster than a snap will load on, on cold boot like it's yep. just like e either you love them right like either abandon snaps or just make them better like you you realize people would stop hating snaps if they were just better, right? <laughs> like, mm. If you just make them better, people would use them. Like, but see, that's the problem. Can't take a turd and make it better. Come on now. <laughs> I mean, right. like, what are you gonna do? Put some whipped cream on top of it? It's still <laughs> a pile of turds. Like, <laughs> I don't know if you, you're probably too young for this. You're probably like five years old when this movie came out. They're one of one of the American Pie movies. Um, had Stifler eating it like a, it looked like a chocolate, but it was actually a dog turd. Every time somebody says polish a turd, it reminds me of that scene. Um, <laughs> God, those movies were ages and ages ago. Wow, we're not now, gonna get any I movies. We do we're, remember the American Pie movie? <laughs> first of all, can we just hold on a second? Like they, they made more than one of those movies, <laughs> but also yeah. <laughs> it. it it's surprising how many movies have sequels that you didn't really know existed. So, for like an example, there are three John Wick movies. I had no mm -hmm. clue there are three John Wick movies. Also, that one with Liam Neeson, the one with the the one where his his family keeps getting kidnapped. Like, first of all, man, yeah, <laughs> like just, you, maybe put uh, like a, a tracker on them or something. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, hold on, you didn't realize that there were multiple John Wicks. We're gonna have to go back to that. No, I only I've ever seen the first one. I didn't know there was any more of those. I've I had no clue there were sequels, um, but also like there's a, there's a movie with Jason Statham in it called The Mechanic. It had um, a Donald Sutherland in it, but I and I don't remember who the other the main character was. But it's it's a horrible movie. It's like not a good movie at all. They made a sequel mm -hmm. to it. Like they made a sequel to that horrible horrible movie. It was really bad, and I don't even understand how they. It's like, you, I don't even know how they made a sequel to it. It's like. It's really weird. Also, they were planning on making a sequel to The Departed. Have you ever seen The Departed? Really? They were going to make a sequel to that? Like, how do you make a sequel to something where every single character except for one dies? Like, every... every okay, spoiler alert. Everyone at the end of Depar and Departed <laughs> dies. They, they get shot in the head at the end of the movie. <laughs> or, 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 or some variation of, of a case. Like, everyone. Martin Shin gets thrown off the top of a building... Uh, Jack Nicholson gets shot in the chest. You know, M Matt Damon gets shot in the head. Leonardo DiCaprio gets shot in the head. You know, they all, they all die at the end of the movie. The only main character that's still there, if you want to call him main character, is Mark Wahlberg's character. He's still alive. <laughs> oh, and Alec Baldwin, but he he's so minor in that movie. But still, I mean, like, how do you make a sequel to that? We we got off track. <laughs> I, I love I love the fact that we did go off track only to talk about the fact that it's ridiculous that Hollywood will fund like sequels to already stupid movies yeah. where like you can't make a sequel to it like there's no possible way but they're like we will make it work all right we'll bring we'll bring half the characters back from the dead they all magically survived a bullet shot to the face okay oh, yeah. it's it's the way they do Batman and Spider Man and all that stuff, all just change <laughs> change actors, and all of a sudden it's a new arc, like in the comic books, you know. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> we really should refrain from mentioning movies because every time we mention a movie, we just you know, oh look, movies. We talk about movies yeah. instead. Movies is way more interesting than than Linux. <laughs> all right, so my news item of the week is that and. I'm pretty sure that this was news item of last week, but I, you know, didn't talk about it. But the uh, OBS 27.2 was released, and it is now the the flat pack version of this is the official uh, version of OBS that you and 
I highly recommend everybody downloads it. Like everybody, you should mm-hmm. use this version of OBS. It is so much better. If for no other reason, then it's actually up to date. So if you use the Arch version that's in the Arch repositories, it's like five versions behind. Mm-hmm. And normally, you think Arch is this distro that prides itself on being like, I don't know, the the latest and greatest of everything. Like the is the the sh- what the hell's going on in the background right there right now? <laughs> <laughs> Scott just picked up money. <laughs> Tyler, someone's kidnapping your dog. <laughs> you should contact Liam Neeson. <laughs> Buddy, no. <laughs> uh, I will, f- wherever you are, I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> Taken, that was the name of those movies. Taken movies yeah. Uh, yeah, I never watched the second ones because I, I couldn't get past the fact that, wait, somebody else was taken? Like, come on, man. How much bad luck do you need? <laughs> the poor guy. Uh, uh, um, anyways, um, what was I saying? Oh, the flat pack. Thing. So the, the Arch stuff is so far behind. And it, like, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, but the, the newer OBS stuff has a ton of new features, specifically YouTube account and integration. So you can actually, instead of using your stream key, you just sign and authenticate with your account. And then you can go through and down. You can dock your chat there. You can sh- show some statistics. Mm-hmm. It's all really good, and it does this for a lot of things. It does it for like Twitch. It does it for Streamios and Streamlabs and all this stuff. And it's really good. It's it's like excellent. Um, it is a little weird that they move it, with a flat pack version moves the folder for where the configuration files are stored. But once you figure that out, you can just move all your stuff over. It wasn't that hard at all. Um, I have found that some transforms aren't there, but also plugins seem to still work. So I'm going to be messing around with some plugins later uh, to make things uh, snazzy. So, yeah, that's mm-hmm. the, that's the 20, 27.2 release of OBS. And I think this is another reason why, just to go back to our previous conversation before we got into uh, movies, uh, this is not just another reason why flat packs are better than snaps the, no. by far. Now, you can, f- first of all, completely open source as far as I know. Um, but also, um, and I don't know why this is true, but I feel like I trust Red Hat, even though they're owned by IBM. I feel like I trust them more than I trust Canonical. Maybe it's just because I have this thing against Ubuntu, but um, I, I think that's... Well, wait, hold on. That should make sense to you, though, because Red Hat does not have a track record of making asinine decisions. Like True. I mean, I'm sure they have, but... Oh, yeah, but they don't have a running track record. Also, I feel... If Red Hat... Okay, so here's the thing. If Red Hat screwed over the open source community, they'd lose every single customer they have because literally open source is their business. Like, if, you know, they control System D, Pulse Audio, Wayland, you know, literally everything that makes Linux freaking Linux comes out of the Red Hat, you know society of brothers or whatever you know what i mean you know what i mean so if if, they're a secret society if if they messed things up the entire open source community would come at them with torches and pitch pitchforks that doesn't feel the same with canonical they piss people off all the damn time and they don't seem to care you know what i mean um so another rant like seriously (laughs) like we're moving from one rate to another um yeah so that that's definitely the why the whole flat packs make it, makes me feel like I can trust them a little bit more. But anyway, so that is the news. Moving on to the next thing, which is the main topic, which is going to be a little weird. So first of all, we should say this effort. So the main topic is, is Rust the future of everything? And the, the first thing we should say is that neither Tyler or I are actually developers of any kind whatsoever. Um, you know, no. So, much more code than I do. And uh, that's not actually saying all that much, right? If I'm I mean, I really uh, I would not consider myself a professional developer at all. Like he, he knows some all. he he knows some code and I know some code but less code. So but we're uh, we're not developers. So just going to put that no. out there. But uh we're going to talk about Rust today and why it's so damn popular. So I actually did research for this topic. Which is, I mean, like a first time for everything. I also the last time. Okay. <laughs> Matt, I need you to just hold up, all right? 
listen to me good. All right. You cannot come into a podcast and be like, I was unprepared. That's why I was late. You were late because you were doing research, dude. I did not do any research. I wanted to know why Rust is actually more popular. What are the benefits of Rust? Because I had no clue. Like I, I hear everything like, hey, this is written in Rust. This is written in Rust. Oh, it's written in Rust. It has to be good. And I wanted to know why. So, Tyler, why do you think Rust is actually the future of everything? Why, why is everybody so obsessed with this, this language? I mean... To me, um, I've been very interested in wanting to learn Rust uh, here recently. I've actually considered taking uh, a lot of the code base that I have for the game that I'm working on and transitioning it over to Rust and seeing just what Rust what game libraries exist because I know they do exist. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I'm not quite sure how flushed out they are, um, but... I'm, I really want to start learning Rust. It seems like a really fun language to, um, to work with. But for me, the reason why I think Rust is so damn good is cargo. Like they're, the way in which you can write a piece of software in Rust and then easily distribute it to anyone that does use Rust programs um, is really, really nice. Uh, like cargo, like I've, I really don't have the experience I have with cargo with any other languages I really use on a daily basis. Python would be the close closest, but cargo and rust, it's just, it's a beautiful match. Like it's so easy to use cargo to install your, your software. I really like it. Mm. It reminds me of pip a little bit. Just a mm. little bit. Um, yeah. And everybody should be surprised that I know what pip is, by the way. <laughs> I'm very proud. You should be very impressed. All right. I'm so, proud. So from the things that I've read, the reason why Rust is so important, why people seem to like it, is because it is supposedly more secure and it has a lot of the, the – it has a similar syntax to C++, but doesn't have the drawbacks of C++. Um and it's, it also will allow concurrent programming, whatever that is. Um, again, not a developer, so can't tell you all what these newfangled words are actually supposed to be meaning. Um, but from all from the people who are detractors of Rust, they seem to think that just because it solves some of the problems that the C languages have doesn't necessarily mean that it's not going to have problems of its own, which seems to be something that the, the fanboys of Rust kind of ignore. Like, like people are... It's weird to think that there are fanboys of a programming language, but there definitely are. Like, there's an entire Python community that are very passionate about <laughs> Python. Like, and Python, outside of that community, is kind of maligned because it's slow to compile right no. and you know so there are definitely fanboys of rust as well and the they from what i've read again i don't know this to be true but that a lot of those fanboys are, will overlook the fact that no language is perfect no language is perfectly secure mm. and while it may be true that Rust will solve some of the insecurity that is presented through C++ and C. It doesn't necessarily mean there aren't other vulnerabilities that would be uh, there that might exist in Rust itself just because it's a new language and, you know, I mean, no one's perfect. So obviously the, the language can't be perfect. So um, it, it seems like there's two sides of a coin here. Um, my question is, should it be something that everybody rewrites their stuff in because literally like everything is being rewritten in rust right now like uh you you see like everything from like neo fetch alternatives written in rust to like window managers written in rust to like everything's written in rust these days and some of it doesn't even like make sense why you did it like so like if you're just doing it to learn rust make it makes sense but if you're going through and doing a whole you know like reboot of your project from ground up to, in order to change the language. I mean, you really have to have a goal of why Rust would be better than what you did before. I think, which which I'll explain why for ease of distribution. 
I mean, if you're a small project, no one really knows about you. Um, it takes a lot of like time and shit to be able to like make releases and distribute them, like get, get the releases loaded. It, it takes a lot more effort than something like rust and cargo. It is extraordinarily easy to distribute packages using rust. I mean, essentially whoever has rust installed in their PC, they can run cargo install and then the name of your program and it'll find it and download it as long as you've put it up there. So it, my, I, I think the ease of distribution with rust is kind of a, why a lot of people want to go with it. Um, it makes the end user experience of installing your and compiling from source incredibly easy. Um, so, okay. So let's talk a little bit about the biggest thing. There are pushes to make Rust a first-class citizen in the Linux kernel. And mm -hmm. at first, it looked like it might not happen, but now it's almost for sure going to happen if it hasn't even started already. Now, they're not talking about rewriting the Linux kernel in Rust. That's what a lot of people, like, when that first was suggested, there was, like, all these headlines in, like, The Republic and ZDNet, like, oh, my God, they're going to rewrite their kernel in Rust. Like, no, no. First of all, that would take 10 years to do. Uh, because it's like 20 million lines of code or something. Yeah. Like, I, I don't You're think not going to rewrite the whole thing. Like, I don't think it's actually that many lines of code, but it's still a lot of lines of code. And, uh, you know, it'd take a long time. Plus, it would it'd be hard, right? Um, But, so they're just talking about doing, like, dr a lot of drivers and stuff, like, it would be in Rust. Because a lot of times, the most of the security vul vul vulnerabilities that come through and affect the Linux kernel are because of drivers, like the... Stuff that has affect the CPU and the GPU and printers a lot of the times because turns out once you write a pr printer driver, you're not going to invest any time actually yeah. updating that thing. <laughs> like like no. some some of the printer drivers, like I don't know if anybody knows this, but some of the printer drivers are actually 30 years old. Like they were written yeah. for 19 in 1995 and they have not been updated since. Yeah. Um, and there's well over five guys using that driver. Right. It, like. Out today even the like the cup server or whatever is something that's like maintained by like one dude and he works for apple of all companies like like <laughs> <laughs> like so like the thing that controls printing on linux is something that's not necessarily maintained by like a gigantic corporation it's just like a couple of guys and that's the way most open source projects are but you know that sometimes causes problems. Look at log4j or whatever. Like, like log4j yeah. was like maintained um, by like two guys, right? And then it, it yeah. crippled the world for like two weeks. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. like, like, it, like it was like it made the nightly news. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, that, that, like the, that's the kind of thing we're talking about here. So like, that's the kind of stuff I think that they're probably trying to look at and see if Rust will actually, you know, kind of help that kind of stuff. But uh, whether or not it actually is solving a problem i don't know i can't i really can't really answer i think it is but i i don't i don't think it's the necessarily the issue that everyone's praising it for i don't think the security of rust versus c plus plus or c is really uh, i i don't have any grounds to talk about it but i really don't think that's what most people care about um, it's more of the end user experience, like using rust as just someone who uses software is really nice. Like it is exceptionally nice you don't have to install pip. You don't have to, you don't have to do anything extra. You just install the language. And then if you want a program that's written in it, cargo install it. You're all good. Like it's really nice. Yeah. The security thing bugs me a little bit too. Like, cause I was telling saying before, you may solve some problems, but you're always going to find new problems to have just because that's just the way the nature of things. So a lot of times, well, everything's flawed. So, I mean, right. and the Linux community often, I mean, I guess every community has this thing where something new comes out and it does, it does seem to do things better. So they uh, raise it up on a pedestal and think that this is the, the greatest thing ever. Yep. Um, but they ignore the fact that just because it's new, shiny, and does some things good doesn't necessarily mean that it doesn't also have flaws that you didn't possibly think of. Um, it, it happens not just in coding, but with everything that's released that comes out that's new and shiny and stuff like that. Like, 
every time a new iPhone is released, you know, people think, oh, this is the the ne the next greatest thing that Apple come came out with, and you get it, and you know, turns out it's just an iPhone. You know, yep. it still does the same thing your old iPhone did, only that yep. you were a fool and paid fourteen hundred dollars to buy a new iPhone. Um, yep, and you still got the same notch that you had last time. Enjoy the phone. It's just, you, it's still to make cell phone calls that you're not gonna make. Like, first of all, call your mother. Okay, I'm just everybody, just pause this right now. Pull over in your car and call your mother. Okay, now. Do it just now. Call your mother. Like it, it's that's more important than us talking about Linux, and also more important, uh, and it's also the reason why you spent so much money on your uh, brand new iPhone. Is to call your mom. Call your mom. Call your dad too, but he, he he's just gonna grunt at you for most of the time. Yeah. Right? So uh, he, that that conversation is gonna be very short. The the it's no. the, mother's much more important. All right. So do we have anything more to say about Rust? I don't think so. Now, the question is, should I learn Rust? And then I think the answer to that question is no. I should consider continue on my uh, journey to learn Python. I'm well, gonna... I will be learning Rust. Oh, yeah. So if anybody wants to I... see that, that'll be coming soon to the channel. Oh, you're going to make a YouTube video. I didn't know you still did that. <laughs> yeah, I know, man. I know. I, you know, like, i would pretty much given up. You know, I, I, it's, it's only been a few days, okay? It's only been a few days. But it's been so long. It's way too long. All your subscribers are gone and dead by now. You know, I, I know. In like in like YouTube, like in YouTube days, like one day is equal to like seven years. Like you go one day, and like YouTube's like, all, like, all right. So I guess we're done. People probably think you're joking, but the thing is, th there's a reason why I release a video every day because if I, t it, I've seen when I take days off, views mm -hmm. just tank. Like it, yep. it's, and the thing is, like I know this is not for everyone. Like every if. YouTube, it's like you've trained YouTube. So if you start off pu publishing a video every single day, YouTube continues to expect you to publish a video every single day. Otherwise, it like removes you from the algorithm. Yep. Like if you're like DT or like Linus Tech Tips or whatever, they not Linus Tech Tips, they do every day. But like um, uh, like M MKBHD who does like one a week, I'm assuming he, mm. his videos have trained the algorithm to expect one once a week. So as long yep. as he maintains that schedule, his views probably do fine whereas if you train it to do every you know every day and you don't do it every day you're you're boink you can just like like all yeah like, like i took a day off and like all of a sudden my channel is dead <laughs> you know what i mean it's just so so stupid i hate the youtube algorithm it's just absolutely stupid all right by the way we've been recording only for 39 minutes like we've made it through, <gasps> we've made it through our week in linux the contact information the news the main topic in under 40 minutes. Plus, we spent like five minutes talking about movies. <laughs> yep. This has been impressive, man. Uh, so either we didn't have much to say or we're just flying right through it. All right. So moving on to the last section of the podcast, actually, is the thingy of the week. Now, we call this thing the thingy of the week because there's no better name for it other than the thingy of the week. It's just it's the it's the thingy of the week. There's what else would you call it? A tip of the week? Ah. Eh. Absolutely, yeah. definitely. Thingy of the week is best the best name. So Tyler, your thingy of the week. Did you find your thingy? I mean, did you make sure? Oh, it was... I found my thingy. Right. I did find it. Wait, wait, what thingy did you choose? Uh, so my thingy of the week is going to be Grub themes. Okay, like do not neglect this at all because I never got into Grub themes. I know you could theme Grub, um, but I had no idea idea how simple and easy it was and kind of awesome like you can switch five different grub themes in like two minutes easily it's no problem and they're kind of really nice to have your bootloader actually have some pizzazz to it you know it's it's really nice and there's so many uh thank you for walking the dog scott but yeah uh, that's my thingy of the week, and I definitely recommend people check them out. Uh, there's also Gentoo Grub themes. Um, I don't know that they're made by Matt. They could be. We we all know, you know, he goes undercover, makes Gentoo stuff all the time, then acts like he hates it and is afraid to try it and all that stuff. You know, all that. I, I'm but. I'm secretly <laughs> the lead developer of the Gentoo project. You just don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that, that would be awesome if, if like Josh, Josh just came out. And he's like, I 
guys, I found it. I found it. It's like, it's a, it's a link to like a bio, like on you and, and you're the lead Gentoo dev. And you're like, I guess my LinkedIn profile, my, my real name is in that go Montoya or, no, it would have been better if it was, I should have said my real name is Kaiser Soze. <laughs> <laughs> like it, it, it'd be awesome if it just turns out the guy who like if you ever go and check out fun to the the like main dev for fun to like he's uh like he's got youtube videos and they're like plastered all over the front of fun to's website it'd be great to find out like he's just a front man for you like he runs that youtube channel and talks about fun to just so you don't get bl- like your cover doesn't get blown <laughs> like you're hilarious. the actual head dev <laughs> I'll revisit something I said earlier. Not a developer. <laughs> hey, I can't. I can't even. I can't even bash script my way out of the box. Just to, just ask anybody who's seen any of my scripts. <laughs> hey, same here. Uh, so, a lot of my scripts are slightly stolen, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> like my original scripts have been thoroughly debunked as horrible by TFL. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> his t uh, tfl takes one look at matt scripts oh yep that's matt scripting right there look at all those sets right there said one said right after another he just piped all those pipes man look he's, he's laying pipe <laughs> for, uh, oh my god man that's gotta be a design for a t-shirt we whip up eventually <laughs> got to be it just like it, it's gotta be like a terminal terminal shirt that's like laying pipe <laughs> Hey, look at you're on camera. Look, you're right there. <laughs> hey, extra dog. Oh, she. Is it a she? Yeah, this is Missy. Hi, Missy. Aww. What you doing in here? You ain't She's supposed so to be cute. here. <laughs> hey, lovely, lovely. Yes, everybody's getting a dog stream. This is awesome. <laughs> well, somebody, somebody actually complained on one of my videos the other day that um, I didn't show the dog. <laughs> I was supposed to show the yep. dog. All right, well, here's the dog. <laughs> Hi, dog. <laughs> What are you doing here? All right. Um, <laughs> um, I have no clue what we were talking about before we had the canine interruption. Your thingy of the week is uh, up next. My thingy of the week. All right. So um, I, I cheated this week. Uh, mine is o- the flat pack of OBS. Um, it's just, it's so good, man. It is so good. And it's not even as if it's the flat pack that makes it good. It's just that it's updated. Like, please, Arch, update your OBS. Like, what are you doing, man? Like also, I, I maybe it's not even the way they update it. Maybe it's just that it's compiled differently. And they take out all the features. Like, why are you taking out features? Maybe. Like what, what? Whatever the case is, the fact that they've gone through and made it so that the premiere feature, like the the premiere feature of the most recent version, is just not there, is not great. Like it, it makes. Well, man, it's it's arch. They have bigger things to worry about. Their C tool chain's falling behind. All right. Like can't be focusing on the OBS packages. Come yeah. On now. I don't know. It's just it's silly. Anyways, that's my my thing of the week. I highly recommend everybody switch over to this. I, like, that's the reason why I just decided to talk about it in the news and in the thing of the week because it's just it's so good. The fa- like I have my YouTube chat. It's like right there. It's so good. Um, like there's no extra windows. <laughs> It's like it's amazing. Like this, this is what t- technology promised me twenty years ago. Like YouTube chat embedded in OBS. All right, isn't it awesome, dude? Like the new features in OBS, I love them. It makes it so much more like Streamlabs, where you just don't have to go deal with a shit company anyway. It's awesome. Yeah, it's it's really good, and because of this new thing, it it, it reminded me that there's a way to unlock the like the um the ui so you can actually move things around i forgot that that was a feature um Mm -hmm. because out of the box the the chat window comes up as its own window like and i was i I was sitting there trying to dock the damn thing you can't dock it by default like what i was going on this is obviously broken thank you brody robertson for misleading me for taking me to a a a, a horrible application Uh, but then i i remembered that if you go to docs and then uh lock all and unclick that you can move things around like, <laughs> like it's so good like this is it's like creating your own version of the application so i like i move things around so now it's like uh it's awesome it's even more awesome than before so that is my thingy of the week so that is it guys for this podcast it is under 50 minutes long and i can't tell you the last time we had a podcast that went under 50 minutes in, in time now we've, we've had a couple 58 minutes in the last few weeks 
but getting under 50 minutes, I I feel like we're jipping people. Like I I, I yeah, legitimately I feel guilty about the fact that we only gave them 46 minutes worth of talk. But what are you gonna do? <laughs> so <laughs> that is it for this week. Before we go, I should take a moment to thank my current patrons. Uh, today, Devon, Patrick L. Marcus, Meglin, Zach Sam from Tools, Steve A., Cyborg, Lennox, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carmody, Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin, e., Andy, Merrick, Camp, Josh, Lee, J. Dog, Peter A., Crucible, Dark, Bandit, Six, Vlad, A., and Primus. I did really good there until, you know, like, towards the end. Uh, but thanks, everybody. F- thanks, everybody who has been watching us. Uh, we record this live every Thursday around 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. We were significantly late this week because that, that was my fault. I was too busy watching Pawn Stars on YouTube. Um, I can't, by the way, just to g- give you guys a little extra content here, I can't stand Pawn Stars, like, and I still watch it, like, the, 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 that lead guy, the, the bald dude, I can't stand him, I, like, I have seriously a hatred for that, that man, like, I can't stand him, but I watch the show anyways, um, also, just all. <laughs> like, it's on the History Channel, but it's about the only thing about history that they actually have on their channel anymore. Because can somebody explain to me what the hell Ice Road Truckers has to do with history? I'm just, I mean, please, dude. It's the History Channel. There's it. If there's not aliens blowing up the Eiffel Tower, it's not actual history. Okay. <laughs> they used to do, but they used to actually do history on the History Channel, mm-hmm. like. Uh, I don't know if anybody actually knows this, but my I have a bachelor's degree in history, so I like the History Channel was like my thing back in the day. But they don't do history on the History Channel anymore. Uh, it's just like they don't do music on the on MTV anymore. Like they used to do. They're like the, there used to be music on the Music Channel, not anymore. Now they have no. the the Real World season forty five. You know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the real, real world is actually still going. And the thing is that that thing was going when I was in college, which is now at least 12 years ago. <laughs> it's been going for a while. All right. Anyway, so that is it for this time. Uh, coming up next week, I don't actually know. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, should you use a firewall? So that should be a very technical thing. So, uh, should yes. you use a firewall? Anyways, see you guys next week. Boy.